um, there is definitely a high disposable income, but they're more prepared to, to um, uh, support their own, I think. Yeah, my wife and I feel the same about Canberra. We've been here uh, well over 40 years, 45 years now. So, well, so we have the same. In the IT game, um, it's part of the information revolution that started with computers way back in the 50s and 19th last century. And the, the town is completely set up for that. I mean, now that we've got the internet all over the world, whatever you've got, you can export all over the world. Um, the only disadvantage in Canberra, well, the advantage in Canberra is you can have three or four meetings in the morning and three or four meetings in the afternoon. If you work in Sydney, you might be lucky to get two meetings in the morning and, and you spend a whole lot of time beating the traffic. <coughs> the only thing that's a little bit uh, awkward here is if you want to go overseas, you've got to fly one extra leg to Sydney or one extra leg to Melbourne, other than that. So for an exporter like we were, uh, it, was, it was fine. So Canberra's just an ideal place. And this university, when it used to be called the Canberra College of Advanced Education, right, had by far the best IT course in a whole of Australia. And the public service used to recruit from here by preference and had the, one of the best courses in Australia. And um, so the talent was here to do things. The other thing is, we were a treasury, I was a treasury, and you have to do this cost benefit study, you know, the public service like that do cost benefit study. And we came to it in a spreadsheet, what do we use for the, the, the interest rate you would apply on the loss of capital, right? So we do, and we said, well, we'll use the, uh, we, we use the government bond rate, which was always two or three percent below commercial borrowing rates. So whenever you did a business case in Canberra at a government department, it always came out two or three percent better than if you were in Shell or or AMP or some other company. So we found that things were happening and getting done, like database was here first, PCs were here first, mini computers were here first, because it made sense by a little bit in the business case in Canberra first, and the government was, in, was uh, prepared enough to invest in that sort of thing. So the, the, this Canberra's been a really good place to find the right start. Can I also just add to that, sorry, we, we, we have, um, <coughs> <coughs> the Chamber of Commerce that we um, work with as well here, so the business networking groups here in Canberra are incredibly supportive. And um, and that has made a huge difference to us as well. Just being able to pick up the phone and, and get help immediately, get answers immediately, um, be put in the, in the right rooms with the right people, um, it's been incredibly powerful for our business. The Canberra Business Council was merging with the Chamber. Yeah. I'm feeling very yeah. sentimental about Canberra. Oh, I'm sure yeah. you all are. I'm wondering <laughs> if we, we might take break. two more questions and we'll take a break. We can go <coughs> to a break if you guys don't mind. And then after that, we'll move to the more sort of legal and risk management things, um, if that's okay. So, should we just take a couple more questions? Did you? You mentioned about the importance of the business model. And uh, is that the same as the business plan? Do you want to say more about that? Business model? Um, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> there's another definition for entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is a guy that notices there's $20 in your back pocket and works out how to get it. <laughs> right? The business model is um, important because if you start with a business model that's not efficient, then you're going to be forever competing against another company which is more efficient in delivering whatever it is you're delivering. Yes, you can go for quality, which is what we did. In fact, we had so much emphasis on quality and the features we put into the trim package that a couple of companies came along and they had they had pretty thin functionality and they would just show the very simple thing and they'd tell customers, this is a lot simpler than trim, you should be buying this one, not trim, which did everything. So how did we cope with that? Okay. We wrote out 20 pages of questions and each question was, does it do this, does it do this, just one line. Does it do this? No answers, just questions. 20 in different areas, 20 of them. And then we put commercial confidence on the top of this thing. And we sent it out to a few consultants. Right? And eventually, eventually the consultants <coughs> led this to potential customers. Right? And every one of those questions, of course, for us was yes, trim did it, trim did it, trim did it. And for the other guys, it was no, 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 don't do it. So we kept winning on the functionality, even though it was so embarrassing. One time, the government department actually published the questions that we've written in their team. Wow. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I'm not sure that the business plan and the business model are the, are the same thing. I think your business plan is where you want to go, which you find it's, the, it's that document that you write at the beginning and you probably put in a drawer and don't look again until somebody asks you, do you have a business plan? You pull it out and you get really nostalgic about it um, because you're evolving all the time. But um, as we've, we've hit a really um, interesting tipping point where we need to refine our business model. Um, our business offering is, is, is right, um, but it's t in terms of looking at the people that we have in it, it, it we don't have the, enough people to support our growth that we, that we want to have. Um, and that's more about the model that you have. So we've spent a lot of time over the last um, well, year, really, looking at the model that we have. And that's really different to the business plan. Obviously, they're intrinsically linked. But our business plan is about how we fund growth. Um, uh, it's about um, our plans, for, certainly is our plans for the future. But our model is about what we have today, the people we have in what, in what places. Are they doing the right jobs? Um, do we need more people in different jobs? That kind of thing. That's how I look at it. It's probably using different terminology, but that's how I differentiate the two. So is that the organisational structure? Yeah, more organisational structure. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the model also is not just in, um, your organisational structure. It's your offering to market as well um, to to your customers and, and what you um, what you bring to them and how you might adapt and change that. So I guess those two documents should. Uh, I, I I don't think of the model as a document, but um, I guess those two things are intrinsically linked. I think we don't look at business plans as often as we probably should do. Um, we look at business plans when we're deciding on making a strategic change and then you obviously have to map that out. Well, okay, last question and then how about we have um, just break for morning tea and laughter and anything else. Hello, I'm Jim Lenz from Computer Science and Engineering Stories. And uh, I found it very interesting when you said that uh, you got uh, the money from investors even though you had the, had the money on your bank account already. Yeah. But in your case, you were a successful company already and you could get a much bigger chunk of money for a much lower stake in the company. Now, when you compare this to, uh, to someone who starts a company, let's say you have the money on your bank account, but if you get it from investors, you have to give away a much bigger chunk of your yeah. company. Would you do the same thing in that situation? I okay. That has to do with the rate of growth, okay? the rate that you want to grow at. If you, if you start off and you've got a great idea and you want to grow quickly with that idea, then you'll have to give away a lot of equity. Now, there's a danger in giving away a lot of equity because you need to, to get things done quickly. We always went very, very slowly within the, in fact, I'm a, I, I describe myself as a balance sheet guy, not a profit and loss guy. That is, I'd look at the balance sheet at the beginning of the financial year and I'd say, this is what the foundations are. I want to grow 10, 15 percent. Nothing, nothing like 100 percent. But we used to grow 50 percent, 60 percent some years, right? But we would stay within those parameters. The aim of an entrepreneur is to retain, and when the exit comes along, to retain as much as possible of the equity in the company. So if you give a lot of it away, you could finish up with five or 10 percent years down the track, and it's not quite as good. Um, so. You've got to kind of balance these things. It's just the rate of growth and the chances that you, the, the risks that you you take. Um, I said to, when I said I, there's always funds for a good business model. When I went to the financial advisor, I I valued the company at a certain amount, and I said I just want fifth, enough for the mortgage. Right? And after three quarters of an hour, he said I'll take a quarter of that. Right? The accountant took a quarter. Uh, some of the financial advisors' uh, customers took some more, and then some family and friends, including my mother-in-law, who took a small amount in the company, and then she came straight around and said, where's the whiskey? And I said, yeah, so I said, you're fired, she said. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, now, uh, she now thought she'd go in the whole company. But um, yeah, the stages, the best thing to do when you're doing a business plan and funding is to sit down, when you're doing that spreadsheet and you're trying to work it all out, think of whether you can actually achieve that. Don't worry about the money side of it. Can I actually do these things? And then you see how much you need to get there. Right? And if it's you know, a couple hundred thousand, okay, you've got some local people like Capital Angels, who's involved with them. Uh, if you need a bit more, then you'll have to maybe go to <coughs> Venture Capital. In Canberra, if you've got a good business plan, I reckon 
tops about two million bucks. Right? You can, and you have to have a business. It's actually, if it looks like it's working, you can get two million bucks. Right? If you can start up, you, you don't get a lot. But after that, you, private equity in Sydney, you think, well, we had, a, we had a hostile takeover attempt in 06. And I bought in a, I guess you'd call it a white knight company, a private equity company. And they put up $35 million to buy their share of the company. They sold out 18 months later with, with the whole lot, and they made another 35 million. They doubled their money in two, two years. But the money isn't in Canberra. You have to go to Sydney. Yeah, great. Let's have a quick break, and then we'll start, even if we go a little bit till, say, start at 